Hi guys and welcome back to Maltbox, the non-chill filtered whiskey blog. I'm Andy and I'm back here today with another whiskey review. I'm very excited to share this whiskey with you today. Uh, it's not a Scotch whiskey, it is an Irish whiskey. Uh, I have previously reviewed one of their sort of sneak peek samples uh, probably about a year and a bit ago, um, just after the pandemic started. Um, however, uh, this distillery has basically released a load of whiskies in the last 18 months or so, and they've really, really kind of come to the forefront of the, the now blooming Irish whiskey scene. This distillery is run by ex Brookladdy um, chap Mark Renier. It is, of course, Waterford. This is their cuvee expression, and here it is. So Waterford Cuvée. Now, you can probably already tell, Cuvée is a very wine um, phrase. It is, isn't it, really? That's kind of what a lot of it has been about. I mean, the entire premise of Waterford and their ethos is around terroir. So obviously terroir is a big thing in wine. A bit like the last video where I reviewed their Rathiaden kind of preview. I'm not going to go too much down that rabbit hole. People agree with it, some people don't. Uh, and I'm not here to dispel whether it is factually accurate or incorrect. But they've basically built this library, if you will, of spirit, distilled using malted barley from various farms across Ireland to kind of showcase the differences that they hold. Now, the difference being all the other releases, I've already mentioned Rathiaden, for example, they were single farm releases. I'll be honest, I tried a few. I wasn't necessarily hugely blown away. It's very young spirit, but they showed a lot of promise. What I was really waiting for, to be honest, was their blend, effectively, of these different farms. It's obviously not a blend in the sense of a blended whiskey, blended Scotch whiskey, for example, because it's all been distilled at one distillery. It's still a single malt, but it is a blend of these different farms, these different pro uh, provenances, effectively. And this is kind of what the cuvee is all about. That is what this is there to showcase. This is kind of what they've been building to, I think. And I mean, I've got to say, it's a very striking bottle, it's very bright blue, very different from what you'd see on the shelf um, normally. Incredibly, incredibly bright label there, um, which I believe is a piece of art commissioned uh, by Waterford for the label. It's pretty cool. Now, I'll try and get a very, very nice pink stopper as well. Glass. Now, these are, I'll be honest, a pain in the ass to get off. <laughs> Rather than a cork where you pull it, you have to kind of like give it, there you go, give it a good push. So, whilst I, I fill my glass with some of this whiskey, what I will tell you about it is this has been bottled at 50%. It is natural colour because it tells me that, not only on the box there, free from colouring, additives, and chill filtration, right there at the bottom. But it also specifies it, I think, on the label as well somewhere. Um, it is bottled at 50%. Now, this has been matured in a combination of virgin French oak, virgin American oak, and X Vindu Natural casks. Now, Vindu Natural, as I touched on in the Theoden review, is a French sweet wine. It's a fortified sweet wine, effectively. But rather, unlike, I suppose, sherries, Whilst it is still fortified, these wines tend to be more naturally sweet leaning rather than the varieties that you might get in the sherry world. I could be wrong, however, I'm no sherry expert. I'm no whiskey expert. Let's just remember that. God and Bennett, I'm a rank amateur at best. I really am. Now, again, I'm not here to tell you whether terroir exists in whiskey. I'm not qualified to talk about that. What I am here to talk about, I'm not qualified to do so either, in fairness, is whether this tastes good, whether it smells nice, whether I enjoy it. I'll be honest, I might as well get it out of the way. One of the reasons that I wanted to review this kind of early doors in, into, uh, into this 2022 year that we are now seeing is because I have been enjoying it. Um, on the Rithiaden, if you watch the review back, you might note that I, I made some references to, yeah, it's got promise, but there were some notes in there that kind of overpowered it. Now... I think this is the kind of release, again, that I was waiting for because you get the differences of the different farms, the different distillates, um, and that could potentially quell some of those. Um, maybe, for me, from my point of view, unwanted flavours. 
at the end of the day, you know, a single malt from a, a distillery such as Glenfiddich, for example, isn't a single cask. It is a blend of different casks from that distillery. So I think one of the things that I'm going to be interested in the next few years is I'm assuming, I mean, I don't know, I'm assuming this is going to be a release that's going to be out there for a few years. It's kind of batch consistency because you've got you've got a fair bit of stock, I think, at Waterford, but I will be interested to see how consistent it can be. Now, again, all around the, the marketing, the branding, very, very fetching, very striking. I, I, I do like the bottle, to be fair. Um, it even says all the way on the front there, very, very clearly, barley forward, terroir driven. So they're all about the barley. All the barley used in the distillation of Waterford is Irish barley. They don't use any barley from the UK. They don't use any barley from England, Scotland. They don't buy barley from abroad. Uh, I mean, let's not forget Scotch whiskey. It's not predominantly use, uh, produced using Scottish barley. A lot of it comes from places like Ireland. Predominantly, it comes from England. In Norfolk in particular, in the Cotswolds and around that area. Big, big bread basket areas, as we call them, the bread basket of England. So, back to Ireland. Now, I've already sort of spoken about these guys being involved in what I probably describe as a bit of a renaissance of the Irish whiskey scene. I mean, let's not forget until recently, there were only a few handful of distilleries that you could easily count on one hand that were releasing various different products under various different brands. A lot of Irish whiskey that you see on the market as well, it's very difficult to kind of ascertain the source of that whiskey, which is one of the things that really pees me off about a lot of it, to be fair. Um, you know, a lot of it references place names. These places exist, but that distillate will probably come from Middleton or West Cork or somewhere like that. Um, so, it, you know, the Irish, if you see an Irish whiskey in stores, just have a think about where that might have come from. Just be careful. Don't get taken in by a lot of the marketing stuff. Um, I mean, you know, a lot of it ultimately will be Bushmills or Cooley or some, something like that. A lot of it will be. Not all of it, but a lot of it. Now, on to the cuvee. So let's see what this has got for us. It's a pretty generous pour. I'm not going to drink all of this. Just going to give it a good swirl around the glass there. Because I do like to do that, to be fair. But just gets it coated around the glass, get a nice rim around the glass there that I can then see these very slow legs starting to come down. In terms of the colour, it's what I'd probably say is a bit of a rich gold. Again, it's natural colour, so I'm not going to take the piss out of the colour. If it's not natural colour, I will take the piss and give it a stupid name. Um, but this is a, a quite a nice uh, deep gold in there. Now, on the nose. Now, one thing that I will say, because this isn't my only bottle of Waterford. If you can see on the shelf there, the other very striking blue bottle, I've also got a bottle of their Gaia uh, 1.1 Organic, which is like an organic uh, release, which again is a blend of different farms. Probably not as many as this. I think it's got 25 in there, or 25 casks at least. The one thing I do notice, it is very barley forward. It is very malty. It's very biscuity. There is that sweet barley in there. I've been sent samples of barley from different distilleries um, in little bottles, in little sample bottles when they sent me tasting sets or whatever else, or mates that I have in various distilleries have sent me some. And this is very, very reminiscent of that smell. It is very, very barley-esque, sugared barley. However, it then becomes sweeter. You've got a light toffee caramel. There is a florality to it, which is what I didn't like about the Rathiaden. However, it is not a potpourri florality anymore. It's not overly floral, falsely floral. It is blossomy, like orange blossom or something like that. You've got some apple in there, a little bit of the traditional vanilla as well that I think you find in every whiskey on the planet. Not too much though. It's very clean, it's very crisp. It doesn't smell like 50% either, I will say that. It doesn't smell prickly. It does not smell harsh. It's very well rounded. It's a young spirit, guys, let's not forget that. This is not going to be more than four years old. It's going to be young. But it does, on the nose, in my opinion, belie its age. Not by necessarily a huge amount. I'm not saying it smells like a 20-year-old or a 30-year-old whiskey, but... It is very, very creamy, very soft, 
very well put together. Now, just before I move on to the palette, the brass tacks as always, this cost me around 70 quid, so 69.95. It is a lot of money. It's, that's a lot of money for any whiskey. That's a lot of money for a 15 year old whiskey. It's even more money for a four year old, three year old whiskey. However, that, I'll be honest, let's face it, that's kind of the going rate for a lot of new distilleries at the moment. Um, I mean, I have no qualms about spending that, that amount on bimbers, for example, as you can see again up there, hopefully it might be cut off by the camera. Uh, but I do spend that kind of amount because I feel that those, those drums are worth it. Now, you know, I can see lots of age statements, even 18 year olds on there that I probably not paid this, this amount for, but I have been intrigued by what these guys have been doing. Um, you know, very passionate distillation team, very knowledgeable distillation team. They've got some really cool equipment in there. For example, they've got a mash filter. They don't have a, a mash tun as such, a washback, so to speak. They've got a mash filter. Now, the only other distillery that I can think of that's got one, there's two, Inch Dani, which is the new distillery, uh, and Tia Ninnick has one as well, which is a really cool bit of kit. And just going back to it there, as I've been talking, it's opened up even more. I will, I'll be honest, this is a whiskey that does take a little bit of time to open up, which is one of the reasons why I did such a long introduction. Um, however, once it does, I mean, I'm just going back there and that creaminess vanilla is there as well, but you've got this lovely kind of sherbet note. <sighs> very, very sugary. Again, sugared barleys. Oh, kind of sugared cereal. I know, it's, I know I'm just saying the same thing in different ways, but you know, I'm, I'm talking something like, you know, sugar, sugar on your cornflakes or bran flakes or something like that now, like literal sugared cereal. And a bit of chocolate in there as well. On the palate. Good texture, very drying in the mouth initially. Very spicy, lovely nice initial spice. Not a pepper, hot spice. Just a very fruity, sweet spiciness. As things go on, yes, I'm getting more of that caramel from the nose, that toffee. Yes, I'm getting some of that floral note. I'm also getting some lovely honey. We've got some, maybe some orange zest in there. Green apple, vanilla's back, ginger, gingerbread, gingerbread biscuits, homemade gingerbread, the really nice, fle almost flexible stuff, do you know what I mean, when it's a bit chewy, that kind of gingerbread. And that texture is quite chewy as well, to be fair, so it's quite fitting. Finish is long, it is warming, it is sweet, yes. However, it is tempered by some of those floral notes as well as some of those fruity notes as well. First impressions of this dram, I mean, there's not much out of it, I'll be honest. Hopefully you can see through the through the very blue bottle that I'm holding in front of my face there. Um, the first time I tried this, I had to wait a good half an hour for it to open up. However, straight out of the bottle, I got those barley notes. I got that kind of cereal um, leaning, shall we say. However, as the as air being going into that bottle and as there's air in the glass over time, it does become fruitier, it does become sweeter, it does become a little more broad. It's lovely whiskey. It is nice whiskey. I do very, very much enjoy this. I really do. That is the best Waterford that I've had to date. It really is. I am excited to see what they do in terms of their future releases. The Gale was very, very nice as well. That's on the lighter side, but it does share a lot of characteristics with the Cuvée. I mean, the fact it's called the Cuvée, they're all about the terroir focus. I know Mark Rainier has a bit of a wine background as well. There's naturally going to be a bit of a kind of, I don't know how to put it, focus on the wine drinkers, wine drinking market. I mean, I'm, I'm a wine drinker. I've got, what well, you can't see out of shot, I've got about 12 racks of wine over there. Um, I love wine. However, I'm, I'm, I'm a filthy casual, however, when it comes to wine. I mean, hell, I'm a filthy casual when it comes to whiskey. But I can see why this has been put together and aimed at that kind of audience, because they will lap this kind of stuff up. 
in fairness, I'm lapping it up because it is tasty. It's very, very tasty. It's good spirit. And I think that's the thing that I've noticed about Waterford, particularly now that we're looking at the mixed releases, you know, the blended releases. The single farms, again, didn't really do much for me personally. That's just my opinion. However, the Gaia and the Cuvée, I have very, very much enjoyed. So this is what I've been waiting for. And I am very, very glad that I did pick it up. I'm so happy as well to see so many Irish companies, not just distilleries, doing really, really well from this recent whiskey boom. I mean, even outside of distilleries, let's look at Whiskey Bonders, for example, which is a proper old school trade. JJ Corey. Fantastic products. Really great guys as well. Know what they're doing. Love their jobs. Love the Irish whiskey scene and the community. So, overall, I don't regret buying that. I really don't. I'm very, very much enjoying it. It's, I think, a whiskey that is going to develop as more air enters the bottle. However, I'm already liking what it is giving me back from my limited time with it. Let's just say that. And I think one thing I've noticed as well, just for a wrap up, I mean, I've referenced a lot of virgin oak um, in there, in the cast makeup. It's, it's not overpowering. It's really not. It's very, very well balanced in terms of the casts that have been used. I think some virgin oak whiskies, particularly in younger spirits, can be very, very overpowering, maybe a little bit daunting, maybe a bit too hot, a bit too peppery, a bit too spicy. It's very, very well tempered. I think that sweet wine cask was a very, very good choice. And that, I think, from memory, is kind of their standard cask makeup that they're kind of using for a lot of their releases. So anyway, guys, I'm going to box it off now. Thank you very, very much for watching. Thank you to all you Patreons out there as well. Uh, thanks to everybody that watched the uh, Whiskey of the Year 2021 video. I nearly said year-end video, I suppose it was, wasn't it? Um, I'm going to box it off once more. If you want to see me on social media, I'm on Twitter at Maltbox, Instagram at Maltbox Whiskey. I'm also over at MaltboxWhiskey.com. Cheers. See you soon.